All right, hello everyone. So this one is going to be the banner review for Hong Lu as well as for Otis. For Hong Lu and Otis, I actually won't recommend getting any of them right now. And the reason is we haven't seen the other pieces that are supposed to be comboed with these characters yet. Right now, I feel like they are a bit like the other IDs in the past where they were released without the other stuff. Like Dimension Shredders were released first. And then after that, W Corp Isang came out. And then everyone was like, oh, so that's where it's supposed to go. So I have the same feeling about this Otis and this Hong Lu right now. They are a bit not here yet. They need a little bit more synergy in order to uh, actually become quite useful. For Hong Lu, his coinage is going to be quite solid. 5, 10, 14, uh, 3, 6, 9, 9, plus 4, 13. Skill 1, 4, 8, 4, 8, 11, right? But as long as the enemy has 6 plus rupture potency on them, when he hits them, he'll get coin power plus 1. That will make him average pretty much. And 6 positive rupture is... I mean, 6 potency rupture is not too hard to apply to an enemy, right? Another good thing about this character is that his skill 2 is going to be 3 rupture count and uh, cost 2 over here. So it's going to be positive plus 1 rupture count like I expected, which is going to be very very good. The issue is that after you apply the first 3 rupture counts here, um, honestly you don't really want to use this skill ever again just because you never ever replenish the rupture count that you have consumed. But in the story, there was an ID that provided a lot of rupture count and I cannot say who it is because that will be spoilers but that id might help to compensate for this guy's negative rupture moment so i will say that right now he is sus because it's only plus one rupture count on the skill two which is not really very good for a positive rupture count shenanigans but it's still a pretty decent skill to use initially but once you get the 15 potency and the 3 rupture count, you should try not to use this skill actually. Because all of his skills, right, actually just consume coin power. It's very, it's like they consume it and then they also consume the rupture count and then they also gain the coin power. Like, uh, I, I'd rather you not consume rupture count to be used. It's really quite annoying here. So, this Hong Lu, positive plus one rupture count here. 4 potency over here, skill 3 is going to be clash win, inflict 2 rupture count but can potentially roll an additional reuse coin if the target has 15 rupture or less than 30% HP. This character is more on the lines of Deviat and Sank Masalt. They enjoy the rupture potency and the rupture count but they themselves are not super amazing at doing the rupture count application. This character is exactly the same as them. He can do okay amount on skill 2 only only skill 2 so that's the only saving grace for this character with everything else requiring you to basically get the 15 rupture potency and 3 rupture count so this character is a little bit sus however because of the existence of the other character that does the rupture count that may change for this character here he might become a decent dps once you get another very good rupture count applier and we did see a lot of additional rupture count applying characters in the story recently all right another thing to talk about is that his passive on skill use if the unit has bleed him if he has bleed inflict three rupture on hit so i'm also waiting for another ego or id that can help to bleed this character so that he can inflict three potency on every single hit it's two times per, per turn so it is really quite a lot of rupture potency that you're applying with this character here but you need to hit this condition here which right now we don't have so i cannot recommend this character right now but if he can do this right he would basically be better than seven heathcliff and that is a very very huge thing but seven heathcliff still has the advantage of the skill two being one coin and being a positive plus two rupture count on the skill two so this character here uh, will lose the rupture count uh, to seven heathcliff but will have positive potency versus 7 Heathcliff so really it's 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 no question right now that 7 Heathcliff is better and because this thing here needs the bleed this one is also not better than 7 Heathcliff right now because he is it's a bit hard to get the bleed stuff here unless you choose to get hit by an unbreakable coin by a blood bag enemy specifically then you can get the bleed on yourself so you can either choose to do that or you can choose to just um, run 7 Heathcliff instead for rupture shenanigans another thing to talk about is that his uh, minus bleed stuff is actually very very useful for a specific boss fight and i do mention it later on uh, basically you definitely want to get this character right and use his support passive to uh, apply this special effect here one ally with the highest sum of bleed potency and count loses two bleed count to your team is actually really really good for uh the 
the current story. And in Mirror Dungeon in the future, maybe it could be a possible thing to bring along or whatever. Lah. But pretty much this thing here is actually a very solid passive just for this content. And outside of this content, it's not going to be very, very useful. Because only in this content with the Blood Fiends, where we actually experience a shit ton of bleed potency and count. So yeah, this character here uh, right now has a potential to out rupture Seven Heathcliff, but requires another good rupture counter player and requires bleeding on himself. So wait for those two pieces before you go and pick up this character here. After that, he will become actually quite a very, very solid character with some decent DPS, honestly, because he gets coin power here, coin power here, and additional damage scaling here. And honestly, Honglu doesn't really have any LIDs. The moment he's able to get the coin power, coin power here, and the coin power, coin power here, he will be able to actually be a very, very high roller against specifically blood bags and blood fiends. Uh. If you are not fighting blood bags or blood fiends, this character is not particularly going to be very, very awesome. Awesome, right so yeah this character a bit of lore friendliness and uh, pretty much made for fighting blood fiends only if you use him for anything other than blood fiends you will just be using him as a rupture potency applier more or less and you need to bleed yourself in order for that to happen all right so he's kind of shoehorned into a certain team right now right i actually see that bleed and rupture are going to be a lot more common because a lot of the enemies they had a lot of bleed and rupture on the same skill so we are going to see some shenanigans involving both of them being used together so i'm going to be looking forward to whatever ids they're coming out with in the future because bleed and rupture are going to have a synergy soon it's going to be uh i don't know what you call it bupture uh bleed no that doesn't make sense either whatever someone figure out a better name for this but pretty much we are going to get some more synergies between bleed and rupture in the future because all the all the enemies that we fought had some of these synergies over here okay moving on to the barber of la mancha land she is also a benef an enjoyer of bleed, but also doesn't do bleed herself very, very well. Uh, the issue is that her plus one bleed count here is too little. The defense is also plus one bleed count, too little. She cannot be the savior of bleed because she does not apply enough bleed count for bleed to actually do shit. She, however, does benefit very, very well from bleed. And the fact that her skill tree is an AoE and also has some very, very good scaling with the blood tinge scissors bleed means that you want to use her when there's a lot of enemies to bleed you need to have a full bleed team in order to get value out of her. If you have no bleed in your team, right? This character is like complete ass. It takes so long for her to get the stacks for this thing here. So she's absolutely thrown into a bleed team no matter what. And she basically can just sustain herself forever. Has very, very good coin power and just drinks a lot of blood feast over here. I spent a lot of turns using skill 1 and skill 2 to just keep drinking. But since I wasn't in a bleeding team and the enemy sometimes didn't have blood bags to give me any bleeding or any blood feast, then I don't really get any scaling here. So it was really very, very slow to use her in the current content. But because there's blood bag enemies, you can use her in the current content just because she is able to actually drink from those bleeding damage as well. So yeah, this character here, uh, the sewing target is also not very amazing. It's like maximum 10% increase. That's basically one fragility. It's fine. It's fine. It's just meant to activate the skill tree pretty much. You use the skill 2 to apply the sewing target to some enemy and then you use your skill tree to get the sewing target benefit over here to increase blood feast and then you gain 5 blood tinge scissors blade once per turn. And actually, don't bring this character for the final boss of part 2. That's the only thing I'll say. Just don't bring it because it's a bit of anti-synergy for your team. Okay, so pretty much uh, this character here, uh, skill 1, skill 2, basically is the same as like what I predicted before. You just use skill 1, skill 2 to drink blood and gain the blood feast. And then after that, you use the blood feast to get the scissors. And then you get the scissors, you use the skill tree, try to hit the sewing target, and then you get a big AoE damage output. But since there's no actual bleed team outside of Mirror Dungeon, this character is not recommended right now because you really need a lot of bleed. You need to drink so much blood to get a scissors blade. Like, it's a ton of blood. So, really, you will need to have a full bleed team or run her only in Mirror Dungeon with Moon Clarit so you can keep drinking the blood because you are so ravenous for the blood with this character. You really just need a shit ton of blood to feed this character so that she can get the scissors, so that she can get the skill tree pop off over here. Alright, so that's really all I have to say for this character. Passive-wise, um, not really much else to say. The damage increase is 30% 10%, uh, which is going to be nice because you stack it with the Sewing Target and you stack it with the Blood Tinge Scissors Blade, uh, giving you additional damage over here. But the Scissors Blade itself just gives you more offense level, doesn't give you any damage output. So this character is a very, very good Clasher. 
very good damage dealer with skill 3 and needs a lot of support to feed her blood with the skill 1 and skill 2 and that is pretty much the entirety of this character over here. I would not recommend any of them unless you want to go Otis and only use Mirror Dungeon and wait for the other Blood Fiends to come out because the other Blood Fiends will certainly help to contribute to the bleed because I did see some IDs, sorry some enemies uh, who did have a crazy amount of bleed count so we are going to get some IDs that also do that bleed count and they will surely be the saviors of the bleed shenanigans that we need right now. Right now we need a lot of bleed count, this character does not provide it, she's just a beneficiary of bleed so really only use her in uh, Wound Clarate Mirror Dungeon pretty much. Right, so that's pretty much it for this banner over here. If you want to use them in any team comp right now, I would only recommend. Oh shit! Okay. Uh, well, I okay. I will only recommend using them in a bleed team, a pure lust bleed team for now, just so you can get the Wow Rodion synergy. But even then, Wow Rodion doesn't have an ID yet. She is most likely going to get a Bloodfin ID, and then for the Rupture Fang Blade character, uh, Fang Hook. Hong Lu, whatever you call her, call him. He is going to want to be in a bleed plus rupture team comp. I know that sounds a bit weird, but that's really his best team comp. You don't throw him into rupture raw, cause he doesn't have any bleed support on him, so there's no point. But you need a bleed and a rupture team, then you can throw him in. So you will have to wait a little bit on that guy. Really have to wait. For Otis, you can totally just use her if you want right now in a bleed team. Unga bunga wise. Don't use her. She is worse Unga Bunga because she's not going to be able to generate the beat stacks very, very fast. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. Thanks guys for watching and I shall see you guys next time. Bye-bye.